Hey everybody, it's Bird from Softjubes here with another trailer reaction. This is Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. We're about to jump into it, but first up, if you there is some background noise, I do apologize. I'm cooking a lamb. Because I gotta eat at some point. But anyway, guys, let's just jump on in. Go away. Two sons. Ooh, they're doing their retrospective. Feels a bit... Mm, I don't know. It just doesn't feel great to do this. It's sort of cheap. I'm also not sure what the fuck this is going. Gosh. Yes, remember all these things you love. We're trying to... Oh. And things you didn't quite love. A thousand generations live in you now. Okay. Oh, they jump past all that stuff quick. But this is your fight. Why didn't I judge her in there? That was safe for Your journey. Yes, it's him. Wait, what? Ooh. Okay. That's it. Reminded me of, um... Crap! What's that thing? I can't think what it's called. Ah! Uh, it reminded me of another movie. Ah, uh, uh, damn it. I can't think what it is. Damn it. It's like a lullaby thing and a... Ah, uh, damn it. I can't think of it. That end bit just reminded me of a different movie that I can't recall off the top of my head. I can hear it. But I can't, I can't get enough of it going in my head to actually click on what it is. Ah, I, I just can't get there. Um, okay, so that, that I assume was the trailer. It's a D23 special look is what it says there, and that's what I'd say that is. It's basically a second teaser. It didn't give us anything. Uh, I mean, it didn't give us... It gave us... I mean, it actually gave us a bit, considering, but it didn't give us a lot. Um... A lot of that was pretty well easily to figure out. There's going to be a big fight, like some sort of a war, endless stars, um, that kind of thing. I really hope that noise is not too loud. It might be diffused, but we'll I'll find out when I edit this. Um, C-3PO has red eyes. That's interesting. What the hell's up with that? I'm not sure how I feel about that. C-3PO go evil? What the f what's going on? Why, why was, did they specifically show a shot of C-3PO? Like, that's one of those things of, like, why would you show us that? I, I, it feels like it has to be important. But the, the, that being said, the Rey-Kylo fight stuff definitely saw coming. The end of that is Rey in a black hooded robe with a double-ended lightsaber that flips around because... Having just a solid one ain't cool enough anymore. You want one that can be two for some reason and then flips. I guess that's just them trying to find something interesting to do with it. At this point, they've kind of done all the main ones. Um, and there's a couple of ways that's going to work. Either that is... It, I'm so torn on that. So my, my natural instinct, straight off the bat, especially given this is J.J. Abrams, which I will get into, uh is that is a dream or a vision or something. That isn't real. That doesn't happen. That's my gut reaction towards this. Uh, that, that is simply something, and it's only here to try and hype up fans, uh, whereas it, it actually is not a thing that happens in the film specifically. Um, it's not like 
part of the cannon that she turns to the dark side and gets the lightsaber. Because that's a very specific thing. Getting a lightsaber, like, that's not just like, oh, she happened to pick up someone's friggin' lightsaber. Unless, for some reason, either Kylo gets a new lightsaber, the Emperor, who we know is gonna be in this, has that lightsaber for some reason, or there's another uh, apprentice for Palpatine. Um, which, uh, so I feel like it has to be a dream or something along those lines. But I could be entirely wrong because that lightsaber is too specific. It's too specific and that's making me feel like it must... Because if they were just going to do a dream, why would they not just give her a lightsaber? Just a one hand, single hilt, regular lightsaber that was red. That seems more logical to do that rather than make up this whole new flip thing. But because it's Abrams, I don't think it's going to go that... Because... How do they come back from that? They make Rey go evil. They've only got so much film to make. This isn't... If this was the second film... If this was Last Jedi, and they showed me that shot, which is what I kind of expected by Last Jedi, the end of Last Jedi, would this sort of thing might happen. If they showed me that shot, I would have gone like, okay, she's going dark side, but there'll be something at the end. Either Kylo goes good side, and they flip. And they, like, swap sides. Or something brings her back by the end. Uh... But, this is the last film. This is also, the declared, the last, like, saga film. And the last main, really, Star Wars film they're doing for a while. So it's the last of a lot of things. So, it would be weird to have her go bad. And I don't see Disney ending on some sort of weird cliffhangery thing of, like, her being evil. They could very well be the end of the film. Which will bug me a little bit. Um, because that's something I feel like Ryan Johnson wanted to do in Last Jedi. Something along those lines, but wasn't able to. He wanted to do something that subverted expectation. And then this film will do it. But I just, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't, but I don't see how they're going to have time enough to have her go evil then back. And also fill in all this other crap. Um, but it will be interesting. And how her being evil will, like, flip off against who? It has to be Kylo. Kylo's the only other Force Wielder we've seen, unless they do build upon the little tease of the boy with the mop. I just knocked the mic, I'm really sorry. Uh, at the end of Last Jedi. Maybe that'll happen. <sighs> this is just strange to me. My big problem with this film. So, I actually, like I've said before, I don't mind Last Jedi. I thought, I thought it was a good film, maybe not a great Star Wars film. But I don't necessarily think that's entirely Ryan Johnson's fault. I don't entirely say that's Disney's fault. I think it was a problem of a conflict of vision and I think compared to say Solo where they were able to swap directors and stuff partly they would not have wanted to swap directors I don't think on a big film especially because it was before they decided to do it on Solo where I think maybe on Solo they were like mm, we've been through this before let's just swap uh, who we got but I feel like here like with, with Last Jedi it was a case of Ryan Johnson had some really out there ideas that would really do that that subverting expectation stuff but then disney were like mm, you've got there's another film coming after this that needs to be set up and there are certain things we need to be in certain places so he wasn't able to fulfill all that i could be wrong i always say that on that idea i could be completely wrong but that's how i feel my problem here is they went back to jj abrams jj abrams is a good director he is a pretty good director Problem is, he's also a safe director. So, there's a thing, I don't know if I've ever talked about it in a video, but part of my, like, I love the MCU, but part of my issue with the MCU is they play it too safe. They could do some really crazy stuff, and they're sort of starting to get there, and I like that, but too often they play it way too safe. J.J. Abrams is a director you hire because you want to play it safe. You don't want to rock the boat, you don't want to cause any trouble, and especially coming off a film where they had a lot of trouble, they're not going to want to rock the boat. So they hired Abrams to come back. Force Awakens is a decent film, but it's not great, it's not particularly memorable, because it's too safe. The problem with Force Awakens is that it tries to play too hard upon nostalgia, and doesn't do anything that's actually really that out there. And that I already got that feeling of this once. I didn't realize it when I watched the teaser. 
But once everyone pointed out, like, oh, that's the Pal that's Emperor Palpatine's laugh. And it's like, oh, that's right. We have Abrams on board. Uh, essentially, Abrams will, and I'm sure Disney are playing into this as well. They're wanting to play it safe. You bring back the Emperor because he's a safe bet. People that know the Emperor will go, Woo, Emperor, look, it's the Emperor. And then even people who don't will have a basic passing thing. of like, that's right, he was the big bad from the original trilogy. That's cool that he's back. He's a really safe thing to do. You don't have to do anything new. You don't have to introduce any new elements. You don't have to do anything. You just bring him back. You can come up with the most crap reason why and you can just bring him back and he's a safe villain. Having Rey and Kylo fight is a safe bet. I feel like having the beat, the shot of all those Star Destroyers, that's a safe bet. It looks like it has major stakes, even if it just doesn't really. And I think that's the problem. This is going to be a, an incredibly safe film. Which is why I'm torn about that Ray shot. Because maybe... And the C-3PO. C the C-3PO might be hitting at something else as well. Maybe they're not going to play it entirely safe. The thing Disney could do here to make this trilogy work and stand out and be a major thing is if they completely subvert expectation. I, I, they need the bad guys to win, essentially. Like, Ray needs to go dark side, dark side needs to win. Essentially to do the most out there thing they could possibly do, and absolutely win it. At this point, that's what they need to do. That's not the safe option, and it may still not completely work, but it's the only real way I can see that they could do something that really makes this memorable. Because everything, like Emperor coming back, it's cool, but I don't think it's memorable. Ray and Kylo fighting, it might look cool, but I, it is very hard to make that memorable. And that's their big problem right now, is they need this thing to be something. It needs to be an event. They need this. And I, I don't know if they've got it here. They might. They might completely have it all sorted, and this will actually make the trilogy completely work. Everyone will fully accept it. Whatever this could be, they're knocking it out of the park. But, I don't know, it just... It just doesn't know, feel if it's going to go that way. I'm actually kind of, like, compared to a lot of people... I know people that are, like, super big Star Wars fans. But because they were so burned by other films, they're, kind of like, a lot of them with Last Jedi, they're like, no, i got no interest. I just don't have any interest. And I'm like, well, that's fair. For me, I liked Last Jedi... So I'm still... That didn't ruin me. The what Solo ruined me. Solo was a film that I went, no, I don't. I've got no care for this film. There were... I mean, there were good stuff and I didn't mind certain parts of it, but it just tried to be too much and it wasn't well focused enough to do any of it. It just was like, oh, we're going to do every single thing that you have been told about Solo in the films. All in this one film. And it just became this horrid mess so it was just like, you know what, I don't, I don't care, essentially. Like, Solo, I wanted to be so much more than it could have been, even though I'm not the biggest fan of the character of Solo either. So essentially it came down to that, of like, this one I'm still okay with. I'm not super excited about it. There's other films that I'm way more excited. I am far, far, far more excited about It Chapter 2, which I'll hopefully see as soon as I can next week. Like, that is, like, possibly the most excited I am for a film the rest of the year. This, I'm like, I'll go see it. I'm, I mean, I'm actually at least eager to go see it. There's a lot of films that have been coming out that I'm just not eager enough to go see. With this, I'm like, yeah, I'll go see it. But I just, I don't know if they're going to have anything that's going to make it stand out. Man, I mean, it kind of sucks. I was, a, I was one before Force Awakens was like, you know what? Just because Disney has it doesn't mean it's bad. Like, Disney... People always do that, like, oh, Disney's going to ruin it. Like, they ruin everything. Disney has not ruined that much. Usually, Disney take things and they let them be themselves. They don't suddenly start ripping stuff apart. Marvel have done really well under Disney. And so, like, but it's still people go like, ah, oh, they ruin it. And a lot of that does come from the people who argue that Disney try to enforce this SJW type agenda, which, I mean, 
you can look at Disney and go, I don't know if they actually have anything of the kind. They have a money-making agenda, certainly. So they'll do things that they think will make money, but beyond that, not much. So, I don't know. This is just... I, I want this to be good. I don't know if it can be what it needs to be, though. I just don't know. But yeah, this was a actually less than I thought they were going to show, considering this was on... I had to avoid looking at the news at work today because this came on. They were talking about it, and I'm like, they didn't really show enough here to really warrant being on the news in Australia. Why? But it was morning TV. They just throw whatever. This is usually far worse than this, I suppose. But anyway, guys, uh, let me know what you, you think of this down in the comments below. If you think this looks like, like the, this was a good sneak peek or not. I'm sort of in two minds at the moment, so it's actually really hard for me to kind of focus my thoughts a lot. Um, so let me know what you guys are thinking, if you like it, if you don't like it. I imagine there's some who are already burned enough that you're just like, I'm done. I know enough of those people, so it, it makes sense that people would be there. Um, but yeah, if you liked this video, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike button. And if you're new to the channel, you like reactions and all these things, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I've still got a few things from D23 to react to at some point. I want to do the World According to Jeff Goldblum. Mostly because I just want to watch that. And I felt like I'd do a reaction. So I haven't watched it yet. But I also was busy the last couple of days. So. These things happen. But um. And if anything else big comes out. I'll be jumping on that anyway. But there is still stuff I've got to get through. So anyway guys. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Fucking love IG88.